commentary on behalf of StarCast TV. Top upper right hand corner we have Best starting as, don't be fooled by the white tag, starting as the yellow Protoss bottom left hand corner. We have Gosu Rang Manham aka Light starting as the red Terran. This is a battle of the ages between two seasoned opponents starting off on a weird weird map. We got Lemon once again. We've got the just gajillion minerals in the main, the very exposed natural expansion. I mean, look how much room is down here to have stuff happen. These minerals that can never be touched because they're blockaded. Some random stuff in the middle, 3,000 gas or whatever. Uh, these bases and the other two bases are blockaded off. This ends up being big trouble for Protoss primarily because, yeah, they got the base to work with here. but And you got the other kind of pseudo base here, but you don't have... And you do have two gas to start. There's 6,000 each, so there's plenty of gas. But after you get the initial two bases, grabbing the third base can be a massive challenge. And holding that base can be a massive challenge. There's just a huge wide center of the map. So I'm trying to think how many times I've seen Protoss versus Terran on this map and what percentage of those times it's turned into carrier play. Um, I think about, I'll throw out a rough 65% of the time Protoss up for carrier play. I've seen a few attempts at quick reaver drops, but the secondary factor of this is, if you'll notice, there's not a lot of room to build interior in the Terran base either, which is a bit of an annoyance for Terran, but it also, secondarily, makes it hard to drop Reavers anywhere effective in the main. So, go figure. Anyway, also light one of the, what I want to call, cerebral Terrans. That's not to say that they're dumb Terrans out there, but I think there are Terrans who just know the game up and down, and Terrans who are kind of just playing out build orders. And look at this. Best actually going for a 12 Nexus top right. I'm not sure how much this gets him though, because it is only an opening of six mineral patches. So that's what, six additional probes of efficiency in comparison? So I don't know that this counts as a, I would, the biggest advantage is that he's gonna be able to double build. But <laughs> opposite side, in response, we got a 14 command center. So never mind. 14 command center versus 12 Nexus, both players trying to play it economically aggressive and we'll see if it ends up rewarding one or the other as time progresses i think that ends up rewarding terran more but on this map it's really really hard to tell extremely difficult to tell so initial scv making its way to scout out it looks like best going to scout as well both players going for the clockwise scout so they're going to uh, going to come across each other's bases in second order a similar in, uh, simulator into gateway for best this is actually going to be looks never mind it looks like that Counterclockwise scout for best. Let me actually get this correct. And clockwise scout for light. I know my clocks. So I'm at a score warping in and a second gateway being laid down. Best, if he knew about the 14 command center, might have been able to sneak a little bit of extra. And looks like he is moving, it looks like three probes to that natural expansion. I do believe this is just to get, yeah, faster probe production. Again, I don't feel like it's as rewarding as a standard map just because of how odd it is. Initial marine being constructed and that forward seal otherwise. Best not even going to know. So wandering up, he's going to have an idea because this is only a single marine on the edge. And I think actually he might have been able to see the edge of that command center with that vision that the marine provided there. Factory being constructed. SCV making its way across. It's going to discover, oh hey, got a very fast nexus on that side as well. But it looks like that might have been realized by Best because he's not going for an additional forge. He's not tacking down a lot of additional gateways and he's only building a single Dragoon as far as follow-up. And I'm curious if he's going to grab a rapid additional gas, maybe to make something interesting happen. Command Center that was planted in the main now floating out to that natural expansion. Bunker with three Marines in the front. And we are seeing that float over of those SCV. And again, this is more... Actually, I almost feel like that airtime. Where is this going? Okay. Interesting landing position. A little bit off kilter, maybe to provide... Okay, it just was a miss... A miss drop of that command center. Rare mistake. Two factories now being built. Almost necessary, honestly, to get the room in the main. But two factories being built behind this. So turning into an economic swing from here. We do see that second assimilator critically being constructed and a robotics facility as far as a follow-up. Now, is this going to be a quick maneuver to the what we've seen before? with two base carrier. And keep in mind, Light got that economic jump with that command center, he's getting that armory down now. Or are we going to see an attempt at reaver play? The observatory versus something else might provide us that information. Could also be that 
best wants that observatory just to get eyes as far as what's going on. Dragoon trying to cut that SCV off. It's got about five health. It looks like Bess is winding up, maybe trying to grab a third. He's got a probe in position, but not the minerals currently to invest. And he is he is dropping that Stargate. I think this is mostly for show. So he's dropped the pile in there to the north. Another SCV making its way out. I'm wondering if he actually is going to try to fake this and make sure this probe gets spotted, or at least some infrastructure gets spotted at the 12 o'clock. But we already have a Stargate underway. Robotics facility remaining silent currently. And we have the observatory out on the front. Double machine shop, so that's going to be a lot of siege tanks to follow, plus one weapons. I'm not sure if Light has paid a massive attention to the meta on this map. I'm not, I mean, if I was a pro, I'm not sure that I necessarily would, considering what a meme map it is. We have an academy that's hidden underneath here. Alongside, what is that? Supply Depot? I accidentally took down the mini map there. Only a single siege tank on the front, but really not going to get cost. Uh, no cost there. The pylon is spotted. And now, yeah, we see a probe, but the probe not showing itself. And I can't imagine that he's going for this tech switch here, Fleet Beacon double Stargate right there, and going for a third base. That would be particularly greedy. Right now we have the three siege tanks pressing down on that single Dragoon. Not going to continue. Two Dragoons blockading, and is he in fact going for a Nexus? I can't, that would just be crazy. Dropping the pylons, there's the commsat. Yeah, I think that's just mostly fake out. Another pile in there at the 3 o'clock bottom right, single probe discovering that Caldiron Crystal Formation, which is in fact impenetrable. Actually, honestly, with this push right here from Light, this could be devastating. Because he's actually got a... he's got three siege tanks. This is only five Dragoons. And a Zealot. And this is like in the middle of a tech switch. This is a pretty nice area to hide it. For best, he's actually dropping two gateways in that corner as well. I don't know if Light got the scan off or not. We'll know momentarily. Okay, we do have... Charm booster upgrade, but I don't think that is in. I think that's more in response to potential ar uh, arbiter, uh, potential reaver drops than it is any sort of response to the carrier tech. And we do see that third nexus now being grabbed from best. Kind of greedy. And light grabbing the six o'clock location upon fe feeling very, very light pressure otherwise. Starport's been spotted. Double factory's been spotted. Keep in mind, this has just been two factories. So this is a very strong economic play from light. He's almost playing like this is going to be a uh, three, two timing, although he could push the plus, uh, the, the two, one timing pretty easily here. And he still has actually, I think the plus one timing available to him. I don't think he's got the raw amount of troops to make that happen. We aren't seeing a factory flood. Actually, I think the timing's passed right there. But anyway, in the meantime, the Dragoon's pressing the front a little bit, showing some of their numbers. Very, very light in comparison. The initial carriers being constructed in those upgrades that take quite a bit of time are starting to come into play. We've got a few Goliaths coming out in the field, just four. But I think that, again, is mostly to deal with potential shuttle play. Second army dropping. If we see a, an additional massive flood of Goliaths, I'm expecting... Yeah, just to pick off the observers and whatnot. If we see, like, all of a sudden another couple rounds of Goliath, maybe he spotted it. But I think right now, I'm guessing that Light is still not aware of how quick this carrier switch was. Although I still don't know that it's going to pay off for best. He is the, the obligatory 20 supply ahead where he kind of needs to be. But this is still very Light Dragoon Force. We do see three more Goliaths being built behind this. So I think he does have some indication at this stage. Additional compsat being built, third gas now up for light. Building some clutter there at the six o'clock location. And is this the initial, yeah, the initial two carriers making the way out. And there's a lot of area to abuse. The initial observers getting wiped out. The Dragoons trying to pick away at the Goliaths over that edge, eating looks like a just shield damage in the meantime. But the carriers continue to build. This is very early. Usually you wait for four or more, but best wanting to get them in play as rapidly as possible. Maybe while he feels like he's got that upgrade advantage, potentially. because So, plus one weapons there on both ends. Can't see the actual arrow. I, I do believe this is plus one weapons here in the corner. Good amount of Goliaths to try to engage this. Light now knows that he's up against some... that He's basically up against airplay. Best has kind of revealed it. But at the same time, I'm wondering Best is just doing this for show. Being like, yep, I got carries out in the field. You need to amass some anti-air and play more defensively. While he just moves out and... Yeah, I think that was the play. So grabbing that 3 o'clock base behind this to go one base up and maybe shift back towards some sort of macro. So trying to tempt light 
into more defensive macro play, which honestly isn't that much of a push for light. That tends to be what he prefers anyway. Looks like Interceptor's able to sneak back in. We do have uh, the air armor upgrade, which is critical in keeping them alive in the uh, upgrade battle. If you can get plus two up before that Interceptor, or you can really start shredding the Interceptors before they're... Now you can made a great video by, uh, about this, by the way. I recommend looking it up on YouTube as far as the upgrade war in uh, PVT and the importance uh, specifically for Goliaths versus the Interceptors. Four carriers now making their way. Again, I think they're just looking for soft area to maybe start abusing these factory lines. We have six factories at this location, two factories behind this to bring the count up to eight, which we'd expect. <clears throat> Interceptors, yeah, it looks like they're exploding before they're able to make their way, way in. But again, I feel like this is more play from best to just try to keep Light back while he runs wild economically. And right now he's looking at a very healthy probe count. He's actually up nearly 10 workers. And I think Light is just going to try to play this towards the more uh, laborious, laborious, the more, um, oops, bad transfer there on the probes, towards the more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? more time intensive. He's, he wants to sit back and maybe just build up and max out and play from there is kind of the indication I'm going to hear. We'll see if he unseages and moves at the 3-2 time or at the uh, sorry the 2-1 timing which will be here momentarily. Best has a good amount of troops out. He still has got those carriers. It looks like a lone rogue SCV is going to try to sneak out and see if that th that base is up. The carriers trying to poke at that rear and dissuade light for making any moves out of his base. He ne Best needs to be very careful with these carrier positioning though. Very, very careful because if he moves them too far out of this location, there could just be a run towards that natural expansion and mid area, carrier's not in a very good defensive, it's just not a defensive slot you can really work with. More, yeah, more and more Goliaths being added on. That's also keeping the vulture count a little bit smaller, like mostly playing in the dark. At this stage, having to rely on Comsat, the Zealot Dragoon count gathering in the middle. Plus one weapons right there. And the carrier fleet up to five and continuing to grow. It doesn't look like any additional Stargates have been tacked on, but that's four bases running and Bess getting very, very close to 200 supply. Now it's up to, uh, now I'm curious how well he's going to be able to abuse this edge and also keep light away from any other reinforcement corner where the Goliaths might be able to surround and pursue along that back edge. Some vultures streaming across. Might get some free damage here at the three o'clock. Additional cannons warping in. We do have a gateway on. There's only two cannons to try to make this happen. Checking bottom right. In fact, finding the probe before it's able to drop a nexus right there. Some mines as well. And best very near 200 supply where, where you need to start thinking about, okay, how do I contain the Terran and start getting favorable trades? 2-1 is active, making the way to 3-2. EMP on the way as well for light. And he's just humming. I didn't even realize there's two gas here at this location as well. It looks like it's not a massive amount of gas in those bases. And this is very rad. And here's the thing. Missed the probes getting annihilated here at the 3 o'clock location. Carriers also engaging here at the 6 o'clock. Here's the thing. This map very rapidly turns into starvation matches as it is. And this is a massive amount of carriers to get very quickly. Getting right on top of the juicy siege tank count. The Goliath's not there to defend. You've got three Marines trying to deal with the carrier count, that's up to eight. And this is looking scary. The six o'clock base looks like it's gonna get shut out. Light potentially just playing way too passively at this stage, allowing Best to get to a maybe unbeatable carrier count, especially along these engagement points where the Goliaths have very uh, massive amount of difficulty getting to their own SimCity to engage the carriers and the carriers can just escape over that waterway. So gonna back up. Rebuild that interceptor count. Now like trying to make moves mid-map. We do have this army pocketed to the north. We got some high Templar there as well. Does best realize that the Goliaths have repositioned it? I don't think he cares. He's going to go ahead and re-engage here at the six o'clock. He could just focus fire that command center down pretty rapidly as well. If these Goliaths get too far out of position, it looks like the siege tanks and Vultures trying to chase down that army. Not well organized, not pre-sieged. Best looks like he just wants to retreat that army, however. Best up 50 supply. 
High Templar getting sacrificed. Best action. I don't know if he realizes. He could just turn around and fight this, and I think he'd be okay. This is only, what, six siege tanks, and they're not sieged. He had some size storm to work with, but he's running all the way around, continuing to peck at the six o'clock location. Maybe he just wants to keep this army as a defensive option while he continues to work at that six o'clock before pulling those carriers back out, a single Goliath managing to get all the way around. Now best looping that army, try to link it up with the carriers defensively so he can have that two-pronged attack that Goliath actually might go just for a straight invasion here at the six o'clock. Light chasing him all the way, but breaking off two siege tanks to engage that 12 o'clock base. And yeah, just moving up the Zelts to engage the Goliaths. The carriers chasing down those siege tanks. The Goliaths not able to fire both directions. And there are plenty of High Templar with lots of storm making its way this direction. Great size storm over the Goliaths. Siege tanks getting picked off as well. That 12 o'clock base, that one cannon down, it is under some base damage. But honestly, this is a much bigger loss for light than it would be for best. Now focusing fire. Is he going to focus fire that command center finally? Yeah, now starting to work on it. Not enough Goliaths to really punish this. And it looks... Oh, group repair barely keeps that command center alive. One one carrier loses its life as a result. That 12 o'clock nexus down as well. Some Zealots able to sneak through and clean that up. That'll have to be a rebuild operation. But Light actually getting the better of that exchange. He's still down a massive amount of supply. Best regathering those troops, looking for another engagement to distract these Goliaths to finish off the job. Command center back at full health. But this is still a massive amount of carriers. That's nine carriers, which can shred this extremely rapidly if they can get their full observer, or sorry, observer interceptor complement out there. Side storm over the siege tanks, quickly dispatching them. Siege tanks actually running all the way back. Distance mining still happening at the 12 o'clock location. Big EMP landing on a good portion of those carriers. It looks like two remain with a touch of shield, but still the troop count of light getting absolutely obliterated. We have Archons and Dragoons just kind of waiting to engage here at the six o'clock. The worker count actually in Light's favor. He just can't get the troops alive just because the constant abuse from Best. And I think this is gonna be it. Command Center now has Dragoons surrounding. Siege tanks on the low ground can't get above. They're all picked off. There's nothing but Goliaths left. And the Goliaths can't get through the Dragoons and the Archons to save this base. A huddle of SCVs in the corner, dreading the fate of the Terran army here. But I'm expecting GG in a second because this is gonna drop to a single base. That main, I, I don't even know what the timing is, like this, the stereotypical mine out timing is around 17 minutes, but this is Lemon, so I think it's somewhere around there. In this instance, it doesn't matter though, because Best is double light supply right this second, and there's GG. Great play from Best, getting the carrier switch off. Hope you guys enjoyed it overall. Give a like and subscribe, support on Patreon. Thank you guys for listening.